Hi there. Thank you for joining me for this 10th session of the Medical Assessment of Impairment. My name is Roger Pelema and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. In my very first presentation, which was entitled The Lumbar Spine and Radiculopathy, I suggested a routine method of testing for radiculopathy of the more commonly involved nerve roots, that is L4, L5 and S1. I also suggested testing for the medial hamstring reflex as a sign of L5 radiculopathy. This has been well written up in the literature, but for some reason not commonly tested for. As I noted at the time, in over 40 years of orthopaedic and medical legal practice, I had never read a report in which the medial hamstring reflex had been referred to. As a result of this presentation, I received an email from an orthopaedic colleague I trained with many years ago, who was delighted to now have a reflex test for L5 nerve root damage, which he too had been unaware of. He went on to suggest a test that he had been using for a number of years as a sign of L5 nerve root involvement, that is, wasting of extensor digitorum brevis. Indeed, this is a test that is also well written up in the literature, but once again, I have never seen it referred to in medical reports. The test is visible and palpable loss of muscle bulk of extensor digitorum brevis. Before I show you a slide of such a case, it is worth spending a few moments on the anatomy of extensor digitorum brevis. This is a slide showing the muscle which is readily visible on the dorsolateral aspect of the foot with resisted extension of the toes and according to last, it can be seen in most feet and felt in all. The muscle is innervated by the terminal branches of L5. This short video shows the prominent muscle belly of extensor digitorum brevis which is firm to palpation. This is a slide from Grant's Atlas showing the muscle arising from the upper surface of the calcaneus and as will be shown in a later slide also from the undersurface of the stem of the Y-shaped inferior extensor retinaculum. The muscle passes obliquely across the dorsum of the foot and gives off four tendons to the medial four toes and interestingly not to the little toe. The tendon of the big toe is given a special name extensor hallucis brevis. This is a diagram from Netta's wonderful book on clinical anatomy showing the stem of the Y-shaped inferior extensor retinaculum with some of the muscle of extensor digitorum brevis taking origin from its inferior surface. The muscle and tendons of extensor digitorum brevis pass deep to the tendons of extensor digitorum longus and here showing the tendon of extensor hallucis brevis and the tendons of the second, third and fourth toes. This is a video of a 46 year old lady who had a discectomy at the L45 level in February 2015, then developed a recurrent disc protrusion requiring a further discectomy at the same level in March 2016. Clinically, she had restricted straight leg raising to 40 degrees on the right, a depressed medial hamstring reflex weakness of extension of her left big toe and sensory loss in a typical L5 distribution over the anterolastal aspect of the distal leg and onto the dorsum of her right foot. As will be noted, she also had wasting of her extensor digitorum brevis. I will let the video speak for itself. Yep, sharp there. Yep. Tell me when it changes. Now. Like. Tell me when it comes sharp again. There. Okay, sharp here. Yep. Tell me when it changes. Right there. Tell me when it comes sharp again. There. What I want you to do, pull your foot up against my hand hard as you can, Deb. Pull up hard. Okay, terrific. Let's go to the other side. Pull up hard as you can. Hard as you can. Waste it there. Not there. Thanks very much. This next video is of a 42-year-old postal delivery lady who came off a motorbike and developed an L5 nerve root lesion. She showed significant restriction of straight leg raising on the right, evidence of weakness of extensor hallucis longus, sensory loss in the L5 distribution on the dorsum of her right foot, and significant wasting of her extensor digitorum brevis. Michelle, let me lift this one up. Straight, tell me if it worries you or not. Not that at all. Come down. Now I'm going to lift this one. Tell me if it starts to worry you. 
Mm-hmm. Already there? Yeah. Where do you feel it? Where do you feel in it? my buttocks. In back. Anything yeah, in the down back. the lever top? Yeah, a little bit near where your fingers are. My fingers are. Okay, come down. Okay, now what I want you to do, pull your big toes up towards you, mm-hmm. hard as you can. Keep yeah. pulling, hard as you can. Pull, 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 pull. Mm-hmm. Okay, relax. Now, can you feel the pinprick this side? Yes. Sharp? There? Yes. There? Yeah. Okay, tell me, this is sharp, tell me when it changes, Michelle. Now. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Now. Tell me when it changes. Now. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Now. This foot, put it up here. Now, what I want you to do, pull your toes up as hard as you can. Yeah. Up, okay? Pull up, pull up, pull up, hard as you can. Terrific. Okay, let's go the other side. Pull your foot up, hard as you can, hard as you can, hard as you can, hard as you can. This is a video of a 46-year-old male who sustained an L5 nerve root lesion following a lifting and twisting incident. The video shows the typical hypoesthesia on the dorsum of his right foot, as well as wasting of his extensor digitorum brevis. Do you feel the pinprick here, mate? Yeah. Tell me when it changes, buddy. Changes. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Change. Tell me when it changes. Change. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Change. Pull it up hard as you can, mate. Firm, 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 firm. Big and hard. Terrific. Tell me. Okay, pull it up hard as you can. Hard as you can, hard as you can wasted there. It certainly seems then that wasting of extensor digitorum brevis is a common finding in cases of L5 nerve root lesions but a sign that has been underutilized. In summary then, the clinical findings in a case of L5 nerve root involvement might include a positive straight leg raising test, depressed or absent medial hamstring reflex, Diminished sensation on the anterolateral aspect of the distal leg extending onto the dorsum of the foot. Weakness of extensor hallucis longus. Wasting of extensor digitorum brevis. I hope you find this sign useful in diagnosing L5 root lesions. And once again, thank you for your attention. And I hope that you will join me for the next presentation. Until then, Salani Gashle.